welcome one and all to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. And ladies and gentlemen, you can... You hear that sparkle? You can feel the electricity in the air because it is primary day all across America. Five states are choosing their party nominees for state and federal office. Pennsylvania, Oregon, Idaho, North Carolina, and Kentucky, or as election experts collectively know them, poink! <laughs> now, it's Point Tuesday. Now, we tape this show early. Yeah. And uh, that means we don't know the results yet, but by the time this airs, the victors will be celebrating, and the losers will be saying that they're the victors. <laughs> now, it's a, it's a particularly big day. Yeah? Yeah? How you doing? I'm doing okay. It's a particularly big day for the GOP. The party is choosing its direction for 2022. Original recipe nutballs <laughs> or extra crispy cuckoo cojones? <laughs> and, mmm, mmm, cuckoo cojones. Nowhere is that competition tighter than the Keystone State, Pennsylvania, where the Republican Senate race is a battle royale between hedge fund executive and divorced dad vacationing alone, David McCormick, <laughs> TV con man and funeral director flirtatiously asking, is this casket taken? <laughs> Dr. Mehmet Oz and surprise latecomer, former radio talk show host and Christian ventriloquist with a faith-based <laughs> dummy, Kathy Barnett. As of this week, uh, McCormick's internal polling showed the candidates neck and neck and neck, with McCormick at 25% and Oz and Barnett tied at 24%. Of the three, Dr. Oz has the former president's backing, and last night he made sure to remind everyone of that. President Trump said this, and I think he was right and kind to say it, that I am smart, I am tough, and I will never let you down. Because there is nothing more impressive than being called smart by a man who stared directly at an eclipse. <laughs> but then... Not supposed to... Not supposed to... That happened. That happened. That happened. Thank you. <laughs> but then things got weird. You never want to let your people down. So when you go to bed at night and put your head on that soft pillow, you know Oz will be doing exactly what you'd want him to do if you were there next to him. That is the creepiest political promise since George H.W. Bush said this. Kiss my lips, I give tongue. Dr. Oz is making a big final push because Barnett has been surging in the polls despite a long history of bigoted statements against gay people and Muslims. Or possibly because of that. And this weekend, she tried to defend her comments on Sunday, Sunday, Fox News Fun Day. The overwhelming majority of the tweets that are now being presented are not even full thoughts. They're not even full sentences. See? She's a perfectly qualified candidate for U.S. Senate who cannot finish a sentence. It explains her campaign slogan, vote for... <laughs> vote... Sure. Kinda. 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 Good enough. There you go. Barnett said it's important to remember that all these comments happened so long ago. I can't provide a lot of context because, again, it's almost 10 years ago. That's how far they have to go back to try to find anything on me. Okay, 10 years, but keep in mind, Kathy Barnett is a 50-year-old woman. That's like saying, look, we all say and do stupid things when we turn 40. It's that carefree 20-second summer after high school. <laughs> and now, to add... And now, to add insurrection to injury, this weekend, several news sites confirmed that this right here is, in fact, Kathy Barnett marching on the Capitol on January 6th alongside the Proud Boys. So, she tried to overthrow an institution and now wants to work there? <laughs> That's like holding up a bank saying, put the money in the bag. Also, this seems like a pretty good gig. Could I drop a resume off with you guys? <laughs> By the way, how often do these robberies happen? Because... Because <laughs> this seems kind of scary. <laughs> now, for his part, the former president seems to be nervous that Barnett's brand of intolerance will beat out his favorite grifter,
but he is hedging his bets, putting out this statement, Kathy Barnett will never be able to win the general election against the radical left Democrats. She has many things in her past which have not been properly explained or vetted, adding, but if she is able to do so, she will have a wonderful future in the Republican Party, and I will be behind her all the way. That's a bit of an abrupt turn. <laughs> I, Gregory, to take Catherine to be my lawfully wedded wife, to love and cherish in sickness and in health, till death do us part. Unless any of those bridesmaids are into it, then I am DTF. <laughs> Let's get it on. Speaking of deranged leaders, British Prime Minister and Muppet, and Muppet finding out where the hand goes, Boris Johnson. <laughs> After more than two years, of COVID work from home, Johnson is calling on Brits to come back to the office, explaining, my experience of working from home is you spend an awful lot of time making another cup of coffee, and then, you know, getting up, <laughs> walking very slowly to the fridge, <laughs> hacking off a small piece of cheese, then walking very slowly back to your laptop, <laughs> then forgetting what it was you're doing. <laughs> How... <laughs> you know... How short is Boris Johnson's attention span? <laughs> Should we need to deploy nuclear missiles against our enemies in... Ooh, Gouda! <laughs> don't, don't mind if I do da. <laughs> now, what was I talking about? <laughs> Gromit! <laughs> there's some good news about Russia, because there's bad news for Russia. Finland and Sweden have both signed off on their bids to join NATO. And Finland... Well, thanks. Okay, that's right. That's right. And Finland and Sweden are very serious about making this official. They each left a toothbrush in NATO's bathroom already. <laughs> One of Russia's main goals in invading Ukraine was to weaken NATO. Now, instead, the alliance is on the brink of starting its largest potential expansion in nearly two decades. How ironic. It's, it's, it's like that O. Henry story where the guy buys his wife combs for her hair and she joins NATO. <laughs> Russia should be worried about Finland joining because it would double the size of Russia's land border with NATO and entirely encircle its three ports on the Baltic Sea. And if Russia loses the Baltic, all NATO has to do is buy Mediterranean Avenue and they can start putting up hotels. <laughs> and then it's over, baby. $450, don't pass, pass go, but then you're right there. <laughs> now, before the invasion, Putin said that any of Russia's neighbors joining NATO would be a red line for the country. But yesterday, Putin said Sweden and Finland joining NATO would cause no problems. <laughs> Apparently, Russia is switching military tactics from naked aggression to passive aggression. <laughs> because no problem never means no problem. That's rule number one in dealing with dictators and mothers. Oh, you're not coming home for Christmas because you're going to Costa Rica with your new girlfriend? No problem. <laughs> even though, even though it might be the last Christmas where we're all here. Who knows? I could <laughs> fall down the stairs tomorrow. Of course, you haven't given me any grandchildren yet, so I guess I won't be missing that much, but... <laughs> you go have a good time. I'll just sit here in the dark. It's... It's no problem. <laughs> but, regardless, it hits home. It hits home. It's no problem. That's fine. You go ahead. But regardless of Putin's reaction, this is really complicated geopolitical shifting, especially for Sweden, who has maintained neutrality for over 200 years. And joining us now to break it down for us are the Late Show's top Swedish experts. What, in your opinion, is Sweden saying about NATO membership? Take a chance on me. And, and, and what, what do you think Putin is going to say about that? I tried to hold you back, but you were stronger. By the way, by the way, while I got you, what's a good movie to watch if you just need an escape from the bad news? Super Duper. That's weird. I thought you were going to say... Mama Mia. Yeah. <laughs> that one. So, in conclusion... 
thank you for that analysis. We've got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Ricky Gervais. He's going to be over there. But when we come back, I'll be over there with Meanwhile. Join us, folks.